Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a tower defense space game, a book about a kid that lost his dad, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing Michelle Greenwell. Michelle is a Tai Chi dance educator that studies the power of movement. Hey, thank you for having me. I am excited to be here, Tiberius. No problem. And today, we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and it's going to be a blast. And now it's time for the video game of the week. In today's video game, it's Touch Type Tail. This game is made by Pumpernickel Studios, all the way from Munster, Germany. This is a game on the epic platform for $20 and is not free, and my dad could not wait for me to try it. But guess what? This is not just another typing game. This is a strategic typing game. Ooh. That's what everyone needs. Mm-hmm. So, first off, any parent will always let you play a typing game because it will help develop your typing skills. But finding a fun typing game is pretty hard. Most of them are just type fast and punish you for misspellings. But this one is different. First, you are told a, you are told a story in a medieval world with a guy with a funny voice talking about problems in the world. And you are Paul, a kid that will save the world with a typewriter. You first learn how to earn gold by mining in a mine by typing. Then you can grow crops and earn more gold. You can use the gold to build four types of armies. Spearmen, swordsmen, archers, and uh, cavalry. Then you can use those armies to capture points and build more buildings to create more armies or farms. Seems easy, right? <laughs> I want more gold. That's the part I want. Mm -hmm. Except you cannot use your mouse at all. You have to type everything. And yes, you have to use capital letters as well. This game is mega fun, and you don't need to be at the test, but the best at typing to compete. The story is very enjoyable, and me and my dad have been playing for hours. We even played against each other, and just before I beat him, he wiped me out. I was not entertained. I had run out of gold. Well, there are a lot of play styles, and I really like that they make sure that there are never two words on the same screen that starts with the same letter. This made it a lot easier. You just have to know where the home base is. That's the key. And don't forget, you have to move your man by typing words, too. Even harder. Well, I love it. Mm -hmm. well, I give Touch Type Tail 20 out of 10 stars because I really enjoy that there's finally a good typing game that's not just based on how fast you type. Well, you have to plan out where to send your men and how long to leave them there while typing to earn gold and setting up your next moves. Every parent should get their kid this game. I think so, because when you type fast, you can get your homework done much quicker. That's true. <laughs> Very true. And now it's time for the book of the week, Ravenous Things. This book is written by Derek Chow. Let me to the back of the book. In fact, Michelle, would you like to do the honors? I would love to take over that. Twelve-year-old Reggie Wong has a quick temper that's always getting him into trouble at school. Well, at home, his mom struggles to get out of bed, let alone even leave their apartment. And that's why Reggie desperately needs his dad back. One problem, his dad is dead. Enter the conductor, a peculiar man who promises to make Reggie's wish to see his father just one more time come true. And all he must do is climb aboard the man's subway train, which leaves St. Patrick's Station promptly at midnight. Desperate to have his dad and happy family back, Reggie takes him up on the offer. Ooh. Well, this is an era book. It is worth two whole points. This book is written for fifth grade and first month. This is a good standalone book that talks about a train where one can see their loved one that a child has lost, but their child is taken with them. So, I Reggie... Hmm? I was just going to say, the opportunity to do something that you dream about is really amazing. Mm-hmm. 
So, Reggie is 12 years old and unfortunately lost his dad to a, due to an accident. And every year on his dad's birthday, he would go to his cemetery and put a gift next to his grave that he made himself. Mm-hmm. Now, it was his birthday again, and there was something that him and his dad really liked. The Star Trek Enterprise. And it was made out of clay. Unfortunately, he accidentally damaged the ship a little bit and left it on the tombstone. And a strange man sees this. Now, the story gets interesting. Reggie's now offered a way to bring his father back. Is it too good to be true? Well, what's the cost? Will it be worth it? Well, I can tell you, he does get on this train and accepts the offer. And... Okay, okay. I can tell you all the story, but it was a pretty crazy ending. You should read the book, too. Thinking about what is possible when for those times that you do lose people. It's an amazing idea. Mm-hmm. Well, I give Ravenous Things 9 out of 10 stars because I really enjoyed the story and it reminded me a lot about how me and my dad are so close and we both have a love and passion for Char Trek. The name Tiberius, eh? <laughs> so you want to make an ad for your company, right? Yeah, Tiberius. You want to help me? Okay, so what's the name of the company? PPWND. PP what? Professional Pressure Washing and Detailing. So you like clean driveways? Yeah, like that. We pressure wash commercial buildings and semi-truck and trailers. So how would someone get a hold of you? Uh, They can visit my site at ppwnd.com or call me at 407-900-7793. So I just tell them to call you at 407-900-7793 or visit ppwnd.com? Yeah, Tiberius, you got it. Cut, that's a wrap. Just use that. It's now time for an interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Michelle Greenwell. Michelle is a Tai Chi dance Hello. educator that studies the power of movement. And, and I love the opportunity to share it with kids. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I love this. Okay, so you were listed as a Tai Chi dance educator. I thought Tai Chi was martial arts and not dance. Well, maybe you can help me. What exactly is Tai Chi? Tai Chi is a moving meditation. So that is moving uh, slowly and gently. Seems like you're not doing very much, but you actually are working all the organ systems in the body and you're creating whole body movement, which helps you with sports and arts and typing just in case you know you need to have a little more speed and breathing deeper okay well how long have you been doing this i've been doing tai chi for almost 30 years and i did it because i lost the ability to walk and i had to rebuild my body wow now what is it about this job that really makes you happy I love seeing people in pain no longer have pain. And when I'm working with kids, I love to watch them go out onto the sports field and be able to hit a puck easier, a ball easier, throw a shot put, all those kinds of things that you need skill at. And I can do that with Tai Chi. Wow. Well, does being a Tai Chi dance educator require a lot of training? Well, you got two pieces there. You've got Tai Chi and then you have dance. So as a dance educator, yes, I required a lot of training in different disciplines. And in Tai Chi, I had the opportunity to study with some, they call them masters. So studying with different masters. Okay. So what is the best part about doing Tai Chi? I love how calm you feel. And when you're finished, you, you can focus on things much easier. And I get a lot more done in a short period of time. Okay. Well, how does Tai Chi help improve the body? It works every system in the body. It wow. helps your heart to relax. So most people exercise so they can exercise their heart. But their heart <sighs> works really hard all day. So what it does is it actually calms it down so that it has a chance to rest and it pumps all the blood Mm, through the body easier. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you turn your spine, you can mm -hmm. actually, you can bring more power to your brain. Really cool. Now, what is the most misunderstood part about this job? (laughs) 
Uh, that it is, um, it's an easy activity to do. It looks like you're not doing very much, but you are doing a lot and you're doing a lot for the whole body. And when you do it together as a group, the whole group gets a lot more energy. So being together is a lot of fun. Okay. So what was your most challenging situation working as a dance educator? As a dance educator, it is making sure I have thought of all the details that a dancer would require to do their performance. And sometimes they have a lot of nerves, so I have to find ways to calm those nerves quickly so that they can do their best performance. Okay. So how was Tai Chi better for you than other forms of dance? Ah, I love Tai Chi because it's whole body movement, and it makes me feel really good, and it actually gives me more flexibility and strength. Really? Wow. When I'm doing dance, dance has to do with skill building. So depending on what kind of dance you're doing, you might be working the muscles in an imbalanced way to have a look, but Tai Chi can bring that back into balance. Ah, I see. So what is the hardest part about being a Tai Chi dance educator? <laughs> if I have to do both at the same time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it is, it's really about um, educating people that it can be really simple to take care of themselves and they don't have to do very much, but a lot of people, sometimes it's much easier to go sit on the couch and watch TV or, um, you know, just sit out on the step and not do too much. But if you go and you do just a tiny bit of movement, or if you're sitting in front of your computer for a long period of time, being able to move a couple different parts of the body That's can me. actually enhance your brain, can pick up your energy, and can it get all the body organs functioning better. Mm, okay. So what is the craziest thing that's happened while you were doing your job? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I've had all kinds of interesting things happen. My best, I would say, is that I've had a harp player who's played for Tai Chi class who's also played with my plant machine and my plant machine takes the electricity out of the plant and it puts it through a synthesizer and I can play any instrument off that. And the plant and the harpist sounded almost identical when they, they worked together. And then when we did Tai Chi to that, that's crazy, isn't it? Wow. That's cool. <laughs> any yes. instrument any instrument 133 different instruments violin yep whoa that's a lot well who can you say was a person that helped drive your passion the most hmm. i have a lot of really good friends who came from my dance world and they all have had injuries and things over their careers. So they've always been the impetus for why I've, I've done more studies into Tai Chi and applied it back to dance because I've always wanted to help everyone who has served in the performing arts to be able to do it with a body that works well and feels good. Okay, so what if I asked you to give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and be a dance educator? To be a dance educator, play the music you love, dance in the kitchen, move all the ways that feel good and that you enjoy, and then dance from your heart. And then if you really want to be a dance educator, then find somebody who you can mentor with who really does the style of dance that you love. Okay. So I see that you help people learn moments even if they are not that active. My dad and I are both allergic to the same thing, manual labor. So we sit and write scripts and sit and do videos and sit and, well, you get the idea. So what kind of movements could you show us today that would make a difference in our health? Okay, so if you take your hands, you put them up in front of you like this, and if you pull your hands a little bit forward so you can feel your shoulder blades open, okay. and then you're just going to turn your hands. And if you move it a little bit quicker, that's for energy way better than an energy drink. And if you move it a little bit slower, that can change how your spine works, how your feet function, 
how your knees feel, how your neck works, and how tight you might have a neck and a jaw from staring at the computer screen in the wrong position. Whoa. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And all you had to do was turn your hands. Whoa. So, what was that one student that you would never forget? <laughs> one student. Hmm. I have lots of students for different reasons. But if I was to go back, it would be, and this would be not thinking of my children. Because my children, I, I can remember so many points along their, their careers as dancers. Um, but I would say my very first student who was three years old. And I taught her all the way until she was 18. And she's now a Chinese medicine doctor and she helps deliver babies. Wow. So yep. what is the best advice that you've ever received? Uh, be who you really are. Don't who pretend. Who gave you that advice? Who gave, who gave me that advice? <laughs> my parents. My parents are awesome. They have helped me all the way along my career. And even now, they help me as much as possible. And they're in their 80s. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, I saw in your bio that you can analyze writing. Mine is very messy and not getting neater. Does handwriting change over time? <laughs> I love that you found that in my bio. Um, yes, handwriting changes with your mood. It changes with your personality. It changes as you mature and little um, parts of you will show up in your handwriting. So if you're a little bit more irritated, you might dot the I with a like a tick. And if you're thinking intensely about something, you might cross your T with a longer stroke. Um, and if you're a creative person, you might have strokes that go down low. Uh, to the, underneath the line and then come up to the line. Mm. So what are some of the cool things that you can learn through someone's handwriting? I can figure out how best to approach them if I wanted to have a conversation, knowing what some of their skills are and knowing what their temperament might be. And if they close up the circles in a certain way, then I know if they're a secretive person, can I tell them something that I know they won't tell everybody else, or are they going to be one of those people who goes tells the next person? So mm. it really helps me to figure out how best that I can communicate, especially with my friends. Okay. So what was the very first job that you ever had? Oh, my very first job. I actually had a lemonade stand and a haunted house around the clothesline. How's that for you? Whoa. <laughs> Make any money? That, that was in my backyard. We made $2.15 and it took us two days. Wow. How much did you sell a lemonade for? <laughs> the lemonade was five cents. Ah. Uh, see, <laughs> now kids these days would make it $5 because of inflation. Exactly. Yep. I would still make it $1. <laughs> it's like, at least make it one, not five. <laughs> well, but that's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Well, was there anything you learned from that job that helped you be a better dance educator? What I love to do is I love to create. And I love performance. I love helping people get on the stage. I love helping people um, shine at what they do. So, yes, all the way along, those pieces have been there. Okay. So, if you had to do a different job from the one that you're already doing, what would it be? <laughs> Well, COVID introduced that to me because I had to stop teaching dance for three years because of the pandemic. And yeah, COVID so, sucks. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what I had to do is I had to think, what can I take all of my skills of being a dance educator and a studio owner, choreographer, stage manager, how can I repurpose that? So I actually have repurposed it to people who sit in front of the computer screen for too long and I help educate them on how they can be dynamically sitting instead of just passively sitting. And mm. so how can you energize all the way through sitting so that when you get up to go do the stuff you really want to do, you have energy instead of you just want to collapse on the couch. I see. Okay. Well, what message do you want to tell children all over the world about doing the work that you do? Oh, 
that you can move easily and simply. And when you do, you keep yourself healthy. And the wow. more time you sit and you're, you're stuck in a position, especially if you play computer games for long periods of time, it's going to slow you down and slow your brain down. So make sure you get up and move and keep yourself active because it helps your computer games be stronger. Okay. So when you were a kid, what did you want to do when you grew up? Did you always know that you were going to be working in the field of dance? <laughs> yes. I was always going to be an educator. I was a teacher from like when I was like five. And I taught the whole neighborhood and I taught them school. I taught them dance, music. I always had something that I wanted to wow. share. And that's how I pretty much approach everything. How can I pass it to the next person? Okay. Well, what was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change you as a person? Uh, not trusting my instincts probably would be what I'd say there. And that is when dealing with people that don't agree with you or they think you should be doing something different and you try to please them instead of honoring who you are, that gets you into more trouble. And so I really learned that I really have to trust my instincts and as hard as it can be to say, I'm sorry, but it's not going to go that way. I have to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So when you're not teaching dance and movement, what do you do for fun? <laughs> I have a grandson that is two years old and I look forward to spending time with him when I can and helping him dance. Um, and I have a tea company and I love spending time mixing tea and putting it into packaging and helping other people enjoy the flavors of tea. Y'all got sweet tea? Of course. <laughs> just making sure, just making sure. Now, it's not the same as an energy drink, but it'll be better for you. Oh, I know. I love sweet tea. <laughs> so, do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favorite one? I would love to say I play video games, but I do not. I am not good at video games. Not even I on your can phone? Move my body. <laughs> I can move my body, but I cannot navigate on that. Not even on your phone? Not even on my phone. My phone is like, I can't find my phone. I'd have to charge it. No, it, that's not good. Well, what's your favorite book to read? Oh, textbooks. Doesn't that sound terrible? No, I actually been... love math, math textbooks. <laughs> well, Especially see, calculus is, ones. Science for the body. That's, uh, that's what I totally love to read. But uh, my last book of a free reading book was a book by Katie Beaton called Ducks. And she writes about what it was like to work in the oil patch in Northern Alberta, but she does it as a graphic artist. So it's all by picture. Wow. And okay. it's an adult book. Ah, uh, okay. So, can you tell me that one story, you know, remember, this is a kid's show, but that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. One story. <sighs> okay. Uh, in a performance that we did uh, in Cape Breton, when I was, um, we were here on a, a summer trip and we were doing a whole bunch of performances. And in the one choreography, I had to wear my wedding dress. And my wedding dress, you couldn't wear underwear underneath that wedding dress because you would stick. So in order to change, I had to change really, really fast. And I can tell you that sometimes there are other people in the change room with you. And you have to try to change very discreetly, but that can be really hard. So I have a famous fiddler that happened to be right next to me as I was trying to change, who had to turn to face the other way. So that one is one that I hold uh, into my heart, and it's not one that I share too often. But um, when you're a performer, you know, you do what you got to do to get the show on. You're not wrong. Well, is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Hmm, I think you covered it a lot if, since you pulled in the handwriting. Um, I just love to help people to be better and to have vitality and energy in their day that's what i enjoy and they can okay. be two years old and you could be a grandparent 
Well, do you have a Facebook or website for my listeners to want to follow you? Absolutely. So I'm at dancedebut.com, D-A-N-C-E-D-E-B-U-T. I have a podcast as well. Not as much fun, I think, as what you have going with all the things that you cover. But I have Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and I talk about how people transform to be better than they were and what they want to really be pursuing for their dreams. And you can find videos about Tai Chi on my YouTube channel at Michelle Greenwell. Okay. Well, what is the one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Mm. You know what? Uh, probably what is my favorite movement activity? Well, what is it? To put the music on in the kitchen and dance my heart out. Do you do that at your house? I mean, I don't cook in the kitchen. My dad does, but he doesn't put on music. All right. And you don't put music on in the bedroom? Yeah, I do. Well, I'm falling asleep. While well, you're falling asleep. <laughs> not not in the middle of the day and just boogie? No, normally I take Roblox songs, video game, <laughs> and I just play Roblox video games. <laughs> <laughs> or other video games, so, yeah. Well, now you know what, well, you can't really play a video game and do this at the same time, but you can certainly move your feet. So when you're toe tapping, mm -hmm. twisting them side to side, you can do all kinds of things with your feet while you're playing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Oh, I would love to stick around for Math Corners. And Tiberius, thank you very much for having me on the show. No problem. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, we're going to do some more multi-step word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about seashells. Of course we are, because I'm from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and I live five minutes from the ocean. You're close to the Oak Island. To Oak cool. Island. Well, not really, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Dizelle and Franco already had 19 shells in their shell collection. Then they went to the beach to collect even more. Dizelle found three limpet shells, seven oyster shells, and four conch shells. Franco found 26 more shells than Dizelle did. How many shells did the pair have all together? I was supposed to be adding that up. Well, you didn't have to, because I'm going to tell you. Well, first, <laughs> this is a world world problem, because people do like to visit the beach and find shells. So, let's see what we can find. So, to solve this one, first we have to figure out the number of shells Giselle has found. So, 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 4 is 14. Well, that was easy. Well, then you have to find the number of shells Franco has. So, 26 more shells is 14, plus 26 is, well, 40. So, now we have to add the shells which they both have 14 plus 40, which is 54. But then you have to remember the 19 shells they already have. Ah! So 54 plus 19 is 73 total shells. And that's a lot of shells. Huh. So, Michelle, do you ever go to the beach and find shells? Actually, here we do have some seashells, but what we actually go to the beach for is sea glass. Mmm. Cool. And if we're really, really lucky, you can find sea marbles. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Now, Michelle, my teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you use math with Tai Chi? Of course. We're doing step your foot to the 45, turn your body 90 degrees. So you actually learn all about directions and angles. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle, for your help with Math Corners. My pleasure. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, 
we're going to talk about integrity. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. The qualities of integrity is honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and fairness. So this week, I practice integrity with doing my Alex topics. In math, we get online work and that we are able to do at home. My dad is rewarding me with extra computer time when I do extra topics on the website for math. I made sure to do enough for my classwork and some extra for my dad. I'm sure to show my dad the part that was extra and have integrity by not combining topics or cheating on the amount. And it is working because my grades are going back up. So, Michelle, did you see her use integrity at all this week? Yeah, so when I think about integrity, I actually, I'm thinking more about compassionate living. So how do the actions that I take support somebody else? And so um, when I'm approaching my day or approaching some of the activities in my week, I am always thinking about how does this help another person? And if I haven't supported someone today, how can I reach out in another way? That would be what I look at. And most of the classes that I teach, I try to teach with that same compassion. Okay. Well, of all of the Heart of the Lion virtues, which is the one that you see the most? Hmm. I think leadership. I think leadership. Okay. Yeah. And um, integrity is important, but I think when people really understand how they can support other people, that makes them a leader. Mm -hmm. And when you're a leader, that also gives you the impetus to do more. So you don't just... You don't think you're not important. You are important because you're leading mm -hmm. the way. It might be well, with the skill and gifts you have. Mm -hmm. Well, we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Absolutely. And just like, uh, just like the lion from The Wizard of Oz, having the courage to do the things you aren't sure you can do and do them anyway. And that! our show folks i'm gonna thank the one the only the amazing michelle greenwell for being on my show thank you for having me tiberius and i sure hope that you're going to take those movement patterns that i shared with you and you're going to start using them so you can actually have more brain power and get that body moving so it's it's working the best you could have it mm-hmm well, it has been so much in Tai Chi today. I think we learned a lot about Tai Chi and how movement can really improve our lives. Like this one. Well, do you mind giving your website again? Absolutely. It's dancedebut.com. D-A-N-C-E-D-E-B-U-T. And you can find me on YouTube at Michelle Greenwell. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the Thai Beauty Show, and please be sure to visit the Thai Beauty Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on the Thai Beauty Show with your host, Tapir Yes Boy! <laughs>